Hello and welcome to another episode of Unity. So today, actually, I got a fun little thing to show you guys. 2D pathfinding. Now, originally, when you had to do pathfinding in 2D, you had to do something like A star, okay? And that's like a huge complex thing that people go literally to college to learn and stuff like that. But I came across the other day this amazing GitHub repo that you can just quickly, uh, you know, go and download. Um, it, it's 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 basically what it does is it takes Unity's 3D nav mesh and forces it into like a 2D scaling kind of. It's really cool, really easy to implement. You literally just go right here to this little green button here. And you click on it, you click download the zip file, and to which you'll get like a little zip file holder here. All you have to do is extract it to your desktop. So I have the zip file, or the zip file, yeah, it's like right here. It's already extracted, you can open it up, okay, you see all the stuff in here. So now what you want to do is you want to open up a Unity project, and I'm going to quickly get this all opened up. And then you want to just, you know, in the Unity hub, you go up here to new, and you just click on the newest version, whatever that may be, minus 2020.1.2 F1, and then just go ahead and make it 2D, and then name the project, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this one test, not really too important. Just to be clear, you don't have to make a new Unity project to implement this nice little nav mesh thing. If you already have an existing project with, you know, something you want to have pathfinding with, okay, don't worry about it. All you have to do is just follow the steps I'm going to show you anyway. I'm just making a new project for the people that might want to, like, test it out before they try to put it in something or see what it is. Um, so don't worry about that. You can You can follow the steps almost exactly how I'm going to tell you no matter what your project is. Okay, so here we are in the scene. As you can see, it's just a normal little 2D scene for Unity. Um, all you have to do to install this package is you just drag and drop the folder that uh, we downloaded. So this folder right here, you just drag and drop that into the Unity itself. Or, well, in this case, you're going to want to show it in the Explorer. All you have to do to do that is you right click, go to Show and Explorer right here. Make sure you right click on your Assets folder or something. Show and Explorer. And you just double click the Assets folder. And you can just go ahead and make a folder in here called like Pathfinding, I guess doesn't really matter what you call it. You could also call it packages. Just open that. All you have to do then is just either drag and drop it or you can copy paste it. I'm going to copy paste it because I use the pathfinding for a lot of different things. Okay, so now it should be implemented in the Unity. Unity is going to take a second to go ahead and like import it all. As you can see, it's doing that right now. It might take a little bit. Um, got a bunch of fancy stuff it's got to do. Okay, so now we have this pathfinding thing. Okay, and it's got a bunch of you know licensing or whatever. Uh, as far as I know, this thing is free to use. Um, so how do you implement it? Well, first off, you're going to want to make a tile map, which is really easy to do. You just right click, go to 2D object and you just click tile map. Um, we're going to call this ground, just rename it to ground. And then you're going to want to duplicate it and you're going to want to rename this to walls. Um, then what you're going to want to do is make sure you open up a tile palette window, which you can do by just going to window 2D tile palette. And you just drag that and dock it someplace. It doesn't really matter where. Just go ahead and create a palette here. I'm not going to name the palette. It's not too important where I put this. I'm just going to plop it down. So now we need to drag in some sprites. Um, you can make your own sprites or just go find something. I'm just going to import a sprite thing that I already have quick. Okay, so I have my sprites right here once you get them imported. Okay, I'm sure if you're looking up pathfinding, you already know how to do all of this. But just in case, just go ahead and make sure you got all your pixels per unit and your sprite mode and all that stuff set up. You can uh, make sure if you're doing pixel art, you make sure you turn compression to none. And then you do a no point filter and you click apply. That way the pixel art doesn't appear blurry or whatever. Um, and then I'm also going to go ahead and cut this by cell size. And these are 32 by 32 pixel art stuff. There we go. Click apply. Bam. Okay. So now we got some stuff. I'm just going to drag these images in here. Um, I'm going to take the blank one because that's going to be just the regular ground. And then I'm also going to drag in, well, hang on. You know what? I'm, I'm going to find a wall image quick. Make this a little bit easier to understand. Okay, so now I have the ground right here, which is just the green simple square. And then I got this cool little wall image from one of my other previous games. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is make sure you have the active tile map select, selected or whatever or whatever, you know. Um, this this is for people who haven't made a tile map thing before. Um, if you have, you can probably skip ahead in the video or just continue watching. Anyway, we're going to paint the ground tiles. So we're just going to make this little box selection here and just drag that like this. We'll make it kind of big I guess we'll do something like this and then we're gonna swap like switch to the walls the walls tile map is gonna represent stuff that the AI cannot walk over so let's just place some stuff around like this maybe like one little block here a few there something like that 
something like, you know, that, that the AI has to navigate around. Okay, so you want to go ahead and create an empty game object, rename it nav mesh, and then reset the transform. You just right click, click reset. That's all you have to do. And then we want to make sure that you go and add component and you can just type in nav mesh surface 2D. And that is a part of the GitHub thing that you just downloaded. Um, and you want to add that to this game object. Um, don't do anything with this quite yet. What you need to do is go to these ground and walls tile maps that you made. Um, I'm just going to highlight both of them and just add the same component to them both. They're, both of them get a nav mesh modifier. That means it's basically just going to include it in the nav mesh. Um, what you're going to want to do is click override area and just make it so you mark ground as walkable. Um, and then you go to the walls, do the same thing, except you want to make walls not walkable. Now, what that's going to do is when you use the nav mesh and you click bake, it is going to allow the bake thing to, well, do its thing kind of. But I made one simple mistake. There is a weird thing you have to do. You have to rotate this object negative 90 degrees. It has to be in the X direction. So right here, you just go to rotation, X, negative 90. That's all you have to do. Rotate negative 90 and then click bake. Now, as you can see, it kind of looks like a whole world of fucked up. <laughs> Whatever that was, I don't know. All you have to do is just, if you want to get rid of it, all I did was check both these boxes and click bake. And then I unchecked both of them and I click bake again. Now it doesn't look so wacky. I don't know what that was. But anyway, so now you can see this as it's basically just a giant, like, you know, nav mesh that you'd see in normal 3D. Um, the agents will be able to walk around this. So now I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and make something traverse this so-called nav mesh. Um, we're just going to go ahead and create a 2D object, create a sprite. We're just going to name this like... I don't know, AI, sure, doesn't really matter. Reset the transform, um, reset, and then we're gonna give them a little sprite, we'll give them a knob. Yeah, I like knobs, okay, all right, what can I say? Um, we're gonna make him, I don't know, three times as big, something like that. And he should be, where is he? Why is he not appearing in the scene? He should be appearing, oh, it's cause he's hidden. Ah, that makes sense, yeah, he was hidden behind the camera and stuff. Okay, anyway. We're going to give him the nav mesh agent component. Um, and then we don't really need to do anything with this. Okay. I mean, over time, you guys are going to be tweaking these values, but I'm not here to really go through that. I'm just here to show you guys how this works in very simple stuff. So we're just going to do like simple AI movement. That's what we're going to call the script that we're going to make on him. So go ahead and make a new script. Call it whatever you want. Mine's just going to be called simple AI movement. Um, it should just get added straight to him just like that. Good. Now. If you were to look at the GitHub page, and I just had it open, thank you. Thank you, Visual Studio, for ruining it. If you were to look at the GitHub page, you can, you got to scroll down, and it, it says that there is a little problem with the um, nav mesh agent itself. So you have to make sure that you, in the start function of every AI unit or whatever, um, you put this code right here. So we're just going to copy paste this into the start function of our thing. Um, it, what it basically does is, I'm assuming it stops the... 2d like image from rotating rather than just going towards whatever um so you just want to copy paste that in you're also going to want to do on the top here you want to include the library the unity engine dot ai and that's going to get rid of our little error there for the nav mess agent um so now what we're going to want to do is have some sort of target doesn't really matter what so we're going to do a serialized field for a transform we're just going to do target and I believe that's all we need to do now, just an update function. This is not, this is not um, like, an, like an actual good, um, efficient way to do this. But I'm doing this just to show you that this is how easy it is to set this up. So now what we're going to do is we just want to use the variable agent, which we apparently need to quickly make a agent. So nav mesh agent. Um, we're going to call this agent, not agrant, agent. And then we're just going to replace this right here with agent because we want to make sure we cache that. We don't want to be doing git component every frame. That's not good. Anyway, so now we have this. So we'll do agent dot set destination. And then we're just going to feed in the target. So you just do the target dot position. So now this AI is going to be moving. Are you guys ready for this? This is fancy stuff. We just did it. We got moving AI pathfinding in like four lines of code. Well, unless you want to count all of it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines of code. But it's basically four. Um, hopefully this works. You're going to want to make another object in here, just an empty game object. Reset, transform, and then click on your AI and just drag in the object that you just made. That's basically your target guide that you're going to be dragging around. 
Um, Fingers crossed this hopes first try. Hopes first try, yeah. Works first try. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, let's see if this works. Um, oh, don't maximize on play. Okay, so I'm going to click on the game object. Currently, he's not moving, but if I were to move it, as you can see, this thing is following my cursor around, and he navigates around the walls very smoothly. It runs very efficiently. As you can see, he stops, turns around, goes around the wall. Nice and smooth. And that is honestly some of the simplest pathfinding AI you could ever implement into a 2D space. Let me tell you, trying to learn A star is not the most efficient thing in the world to do with your time. So don't ever feel ashamed to use someone else's code if they put it out for other people to use. Don't ever feel ashamed to do that. It can help you a lot in, lo in the long run, especially if you're just looking to make games for fun. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Um, leave a like and subscribe to see more. And I will see you in another unique video.